It's no your job at Consylvania to be a faceless review entity, guarding our preferences for fear of accusations of bias. We're not that kind of show. So I can happily tell you right now that Koi are one of my favourite games companies, and Ku Shibasawa is a hero of mine. He's the man behind much of Koi's rich legacy. Oh, it's Prince. Sorry, he's the man behind much of Koi's rich legacy of games, but probably most renowned for his work in the historical simulation area. And he's the greatest pseudonym in gaming, being, in actual fact, Yuichi Arakawa, the company chairman. Romance of the Three Kingdoms has been a staple of Koi's catalogue for years now, and number 8 on the PS2 is exactly what fans of the series have come to expect. Nothing that isn't broken is fixed, and the game expands on the latter title's more RPG-styled elements. In typical Koi style, there's a wealth of ways to play the game. You can create your own character or play the role of one of the characters from the Three Kingdoms period. Then you can interject at any point in the time period, with conditions accurate in accordance with Luo Guanzhong's novel. And then you can enforce your will and change the course of history. You can play as a lowly officer, or as the prefect of a town, or even as a ruler, and the game will offer a different experience with each choice. Magic. As prefect, most of your time in game will be taken up with the day-to-day -day maintenance of your chosen province. As an officer, you may roam in a band where other mercenaries are served under a ruler, and as ruler you will have everything at your fingertips, deciding military and political strategies for your entire force, visiting your townsfolk to increase trust, expanding your cities, pillaging other cities, that kind of thing. Typical Saturday night. Across the board, graphically, the game hasn't evolved too much, but this is a game that never had to do that up its loopholes. The romance games are dead against change for the sake of it, and aside from a little spit and polish, the title was not a kick in the arse away for the look of the SNES efforts. That's all good. Now when in battle, the game becomes impossibly exciting for you as a player, but incredibly boring, admittedly, for any poor bastard who's having to watch. But fuck em. War is hell. When you've spent hours upon hours training up your special attacks in the barracks in town, or spent days tracking some lone warrior across the land, inviting him to banquets and buying him gifts just so he will join your army, the battle mode takes on great importance. When that same warrior leads your troops into a trap and suffers confusion for the entire battle, you feel that way you felt the night you took that bird to the pictures and McDonald's and didn't even get your bobby tickled. Romance 8 is the best of the series. It won't be the last of the series, 9 is already out in the States and 10 is out soon in the East, but this is all we in the PAL territories have right, look at that loading screen. That's what I call a loading screen. But this is all we have right now, and it's the perfect console strategy game. <coughs> it's relaxing, it's lavishly produced, and designed by a company who know this period back to front. Romance is for all the gamers who like to lie back and think for a while. So much of this game is taken up by moments of hesitation and quiet contemplation on who you trust and whether you're doing the right thing or not. If you'll let me put my wank hat on for a moment, and I sense it's the perfect role playing game, a game that gives you a vast amount of decisions, the basic cold details of the repercussions of your choices, and lets you fill in the gaps between the button presses. It won't come as a surprise then, that after all said and done, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 8 is the Consylvania Game of the Month.